Okay. Um, Shai and Asaf, something to deal with uh, both of you. Uh, both of your companies are trying to do something that uh, bring uh, together the, the online and the offline experience in uh, physical stores and retailers. What are you doing to, to bring this together? To bring offline and uh, online? Yeah, uh, <coughs> well, if you develop um, using Salesforce uh, customer platform, you get um, a development SDK, you get a um, 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 development kit that allows you to basically access the data offline and online. Um, so this comes with the platform. Whenever you build something and you want to access um, the back end where your customer data is, where the, your, your analytics is, and the, the insights about the customer, the consumer, you can do it whether it's offline or online. We, um, I think in the previous um, conversation or, or panel here, uh, Mark spoke about uh, kiosk. Kiosk connected um, kiosk to, to Salesforce in order to get more analytics about the buyer. You get in a store, you have iBeacon, you know something about the customer, where, where do you store that data? You stored it at Salesforce, then you know what to offer them, then money becomes a non-issue and obviously uh, if you can um, run the transaction offline as well, uh, that just re reduces the bar, the barrier to make a transaction. It's all good. You know, let's to talk about our plans around uh, connecting install and and online. But I say something that I've I've learned from one of our uh, biggest retail customers. Uh, they basically decided that any online sale that's happening, they use the zip code and they attribute the sale also to the local store closest to that person buying. And when they made that decision, they basically made online and offline much closer just by making that decision because now the store person or, you know, his focus is around the customer and his needs and he's okay and telling him go home check out online check it more and I'm here if you want to buy it here or online versus what you see today some competition between online and and in store but overall you know like many other companies we're working behind the scene there's a lot of things that will come into this combination of in store and uh, and uh, and online and, and I think it's a, it's a fascinating area to play with, uh, no doubt. So I, I, I agree completely with what you said. I think that the, uh, what we call the blurring of the lines between online and offline is something that's, that's really fascinating that's happening. And uh, you know, we talk a lot in this, in this panel about uh, sort of e-commerce and the challenges and the opportunities. And one of the things that we've been uh, really focused on is actually going beyond just e-commerce and sort of going after all of commerce, right? So commerce globally uh, is a $10 trillion uh, market. And it's this, uh, the blurring of the online and offline that's been spurred by innovations like the smartphone. Uh, you know, everybody's got them all in their pocket. We know today that uh, almost half of the purchases in retail stores are influenced, in physical retail stores, are influenced by uh, online, right? Which means either they're scanning barcodes, they're doing research online, they're, uh, you know, making a lot of these things, uh, decisions using their uh, mobile phones, etc. And so what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting technologies that have emerged that are enabling local merchants uh, to participate in this uh, economy more than ever. And I think uh, all reference this and so, uh, you know, at eBay, for example, it's things like eBay Now. So eBay Now is a delivery service that allows uh, basically merchants to deliver an item in uh, same day or in some cases in less than an hour, right? So again, really enabling that ecosystem. Um, you know, and so we're seeing a lot of things like uh, click and collect, uh, buy online, pick up in store, where people are actually ordering something online, but they're picking it up in a physical store, right? So all of these things are enabling local merchants with physical space to play in this ecosystem. And company, you know, eBay in particular, we're trying to enable, um, you know, this local commerce that's happening globally and really picking up momentum. Stuff. Again, it's, it's, it's what you talked about. I think people are still looking for the value 
of the connection between the online and the in-store. Just coming in and getting a QR code and getting a bit more information, that's okay, right? But I'm not going to install an app for it. So I think there's a lot of things that you're seeing that's coming and gadget, but they're still missing a link of what's the real value for me to connect between online and offline. And I think we don't see it yet out there. Okay, so the whole focus of my group is around physical and, and, uh, and virtual. So uh, what we do is... Can you please the okay. microphone? What we do is we leverage computer vision technique to identify objects, okay? So as you said before, the, you do the, with the QR code. We don't need a QR code. We just look in the objects and we recognize them. And not only one, but many objects. So while you look on the shelf on multi objects, multi products, and then we can say, okay, this one for you. This one uh, satisfy your requirement about organic, uh, you know, never tested on, uh, on animals and kosher and whatever your dietary needs and, uh, and your uh, sensitivity to money and budget. Uh, so that's the recommendation system around it. And not only this, but the option to take the packaging. You have a product. The product has the real estate of packaging. You cannot put everything, not every you know, icon that there is in the market. What we do is we make it a browsable object. So you can click on it and get more information that you want to, to see. For example, you go to the telecom company. Okay? You have all these uh, 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 multi uh, phones, and you don't know which one to choose, right? Uh, and you really want something with the HD screen, and you have uh, must-have specification. But you need to go each of them and to see about the specification and go and again and again and again. You don't need it with, with our technology because we recognize the objects, we uh, know the spe specification that we have in, uh, in the virtual shop, and then we use the e-commerce to recommend you what's uh, the most suitable one for you and maybe have a personalized price for you as well. So it's not like having a static pricing. So the whole concept, if you look at Amazon with the dynamic pricing uh, uh, criteria, and, uh, uh, that's something that we, w that we are bringing to the, uh, to the shop, to the physical shop. And there is another side of it when you are at home and you want to uh, uh, um, access uh, to the web, not through go, okay, let's open like uh, we used to go to the desktops in order to browse things, and now we're using the mobile phone and we go to the, to the right app to browse it. Uh, now you're looking at something and the things just pop up to you. So it meets you where you want it and you don't need to pick and to browse for this specific component. So that's what we bring uh, also to your home and, and enhancing your virtual thing by using physical objects, uh, and that's the, uh, that's the whole glory. So, um, so, something, first of all, as far as e-commerce is concerned, the biggest blessing that I feel about e-commerce is that I don't need to go into stores anymore, and I hate going into stores. I, I, I feel out of place, I feel like I'm being bombarded with commercial information that doesn't really help me, but tries consistently to get me to buy stuff that maybe I don't need or maybe doesn't fit me. And I, I think the biggest blessing is that I don't need to go to, into stores anymore. And I find myself multiple times over the past year going into stores and then very quickly after telling myself I don't really need to be here anymore. I have everything online. I can search everything online. I already know what I want to get. And, and the price in the store is never as good as it is online. Um, I think the next step, and this is exactly what we're trying to do in Happy Sale, is to really lower the bar on becoming a merchant uh, to the point where it's something you don't even think about. So a lot of the companies that Orr presented in his uh, deck are companies that lower the bar for merchants, but you still have to make a conscious commitment to become one. So you're saying whether it's Etsy and whether it's Shopify, they're really lowering the bar on what you need to open an e-store, but you still have to say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna get up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna start being a merchant. I'm gonna make this a part-time income or a full-time income for myself. 
that's great, and I think these companies are really uh, doing a huge service when you see so many jobs disappearing. The fact that these companies are opening new opportunities for people just to make a living uh, is amazing. But I think for everyone else, for all the consumers, the solutions that exist out there for, I just gotta sell some stuff, uh, are, are really rare and the, the product quality is not as good and they're still tremendously successful because there are not a lot of those. And that's what Happy Sale is doing. Happy Sale is focused in, in making the mobile device, which is basically like a wonderful digital Swiss knife. We're developing that blade that says sell everything on it. And, and if we're successful, then you know, a year into the future, two years into the future, the question of buying something and not needing it, getting stuck with a pair of shoes that doesn't really sit well or uh, tickets to a show is really gonna be a no-brainer. You'll post it in 30 seconds, it's gonna get sold in two hours, you're done. Somebody's gonna either come and get it or a delivery service is gonna come and get it. It's all gonna be seamless, one click, location-based, socially connected. Uh, that, that's the vision we're aiming for and, and basically turning e-commerce into an activity that both as a buyer and as a seller, we do every day. Just to connect to what uh, <clears throat> you said, I, th I think many of those stores become showrooms more than a, a place to buy. I think uh, Salesforce announced recently Salesforce Wear, and this is the first initiative, I think, in the industry that allows brands to con uh, enterprises to connect to um, the consumer. Um, think of it, enterprises connect to consumers. This, is, this could be Tom's for shoes or it could be anything else. Um, and um, today we have more than 15 devices. We just launched two, two months ago, but with those devices, you can essentially connect to your enterprise data. The data from the enterprise can connect to you in the sense of uh, e-commerce. Um, think of you uh, walking down the street, you see a nice shop, you see some showroom, you want it, but the transaction doesn't have to take place inside those store. It can happen um, online. And that's kind of a different experience that we see um, when you, you talk about the number, the amount of um, devices, connected devices um, projected. Um, we talk about 75 billion devices by 2020, which is incredible. This is growing five times as much as uh, mobile phones have grown. And that's, that's the Salesforce way of uh, bringing the consumer to the brand and bringing the brand to the consumer and making uh, an insightful purchasing decision. I wanted to ask you something. Do you think there is something that you can sell online or you can sell everything? The own guy, you know it from a, your company? So we constantly have people trying to sell on Happy Sales stuff they can sell online. Uh, it, it ranges from illegal drugs to people. Um, people? <laughs> yeah. People. What do you mean? It, 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 Half of it is a joke, and half of it is really illegal. I hope uh, it's, it's not babies. <laughs> no, it's not babies. Um, but as, as far as online uh, commerce for legitimate products, I really think all the barriers are broken. I mean, when you get to the point, I think, I think fashion was the hardest one. Because electronics, you know, you have warranties and you have return policies and it's fine. And the only thing about fashion is that you really have to try it out. And once this was solved, and it was solved a long, a long time ago. I mean, companies like Zappos did it for shoes and uh, uh, other companies did it for fashion. Once this was solved, I think there's really nothing you can buy online right now. By the way, the, the way they solve it is not by technology. You just said, take it home. If you don't like it, bring it back. If you talk about e-commerce in Israel, try to do it in Israel. OK. Uh, guy from eBay point of view, do you think there is something that you can sell online? You know, I think that in general, what we've been focusing on is how do you actually enable people to sell uh, frictionlessly through a lot of different mediums. So that's really been our focus, is essentially whether it's uh, through more local means, if you're a small merchant and you want to sell uh, on eBay in its traditional sense, if you're a medium-sized merchant, we basically will give you the tools and the platforms to run your e-commerce business end-to-end. -end. And all the way to if you're a huge merchant like Toys R Us, Ralph Lauren, all these uh, sites today are completely powered by eBay end-to-end uh, -end, from fulfillment to uh, you know, the website experience. So uh, we think that you know, with all these new technologies that are emerging and omni-channel, uh, it's just going to get easier and easier to sell uh, items, whether you're a small guy or whether you're a huge guy. Okay. Uh, that's it. 
Thank you all for coming and talking. Um, one more thing before everybody go, we have a surprise here. So uh, please, the surprise, come on stage.